All right, today I want to explain the difference between two genetic anomalies in ball pythons, and that is the paradox and the chimera. And on the surface, they look really similar, the paradox and the chimera, but genetically they are significantly different as far as a genetic standpoint. And first of all, let's start with the paradox. And if you looked at some of your reptile shows, or maybe you looked at Morph Market, and you're looking through some of the snakes, you'll actually see paradox listed as one of the genes. As a matter of fact, it's kind of grayed out. It's not really a codominant, dominant, or recessive, or allelic, or anything you think about as far as your typical genetics. It is kind of, um, I would say, almost like a birth defect. And really, what it, the only thing it really affects is the color and the pattern of the snake. It doesn't affect, you can't really have like a kink spine, you wouldn't call that a paradox. The paradox is really only talking about the color pattern mutation of the snake. So for example, I have this uh, spider pied, uh, this is a spider pied male, and with a typical spider pied, you would expect an all white snake with just a little bit of color on the head. And if you had uh, a white wedding, which is another version of this, it's basically a completely white snake. And as a breeder, you know, I can look at, you know, spiders, and I mix my spider with my pied, get some, some heads, mix the heads together, and I can actually make the snake really easy. I know what it's supposed to look like. And in a, in a paradox, what happens is, for example, you'll have, instead of an all white snake over here, you'll have a little patch of uh, it almost looks like normal or like a completely like someone took a marker and blackened it out or something totally unexpected on the snake that that would not be reproducible as a matter of fact you know you look at paradoxes and as a breeder you can think of it in terms of this way you can think there is nothing i can breed together to get that pattern on the snake to make that paradox and that's why it's kind of a paradox because it's it's you can't make it you know as far as your regular genetics as, as a breeder standpoint you can't go into like a genetic calculator plug in the snakes and then get the paradox it's impossible and as far as I know there's really no genetic um, transference of that color and pattern to the offspring I was actually looking on some of the forums about, I think about five or six years ago when I was really heavy into the ball python forums and actually someone was mentioning that there was a genetic paradox that was recessive and I haven't really seen anything lately about it and I'm not sure if it was really proven or it was just kind of some hoax that people are talking about and they said it was called the atomic gene. So the, if it's still out there, the atomic gene would be a paradox that is genetically transferred, it's a recessive trait. And I just thought it'd be kind of neat to actually pick up a whole bunch of paradox ball pythons, breed them together, and see if you can get some of the paradoxing into the offspring uh, and see if you could actually figure out if, if you have the atomic gene, if you can make it genetic and transfer it. I think it would be really neat to have a genetically transferred paradox and kind of, you know, work with that gene. And, and maybe you'd be one of the first ones to really develop the paradox. I'm not sure if actually someone tried to prove it out and it didn't prove out and it kind of dropped off the whole face of the ball python market. I'm not sure exactly what happened to atomic, but I thought it was pretty interesting. So let's move over to Chimera. Chimera is a completely different ball game, let me tell you. So Chimera, on the surface it looks the same, so you have a white snake, and you might have a little patch of albino, or a little patch of a different gene on top of the snake, and what happens with Chimera is it's, it starts with the fertilized eggs, and, and you have two fertilized eggs when ball pythons are breeding, and what happens is the two eggs merge together into a single organism. It's almost, you can almost think about it as twins that merge together into a single individual. 
And the funny thing is, is chimerism is not only uh, in ball pythons, but it's also in people too. <laughs> I actually saw there's a, a lady who had some kids and she didn't actually know that she was a chimera, which is pretty weird to think about. And she did a DNA test, you know, kind of did a swab in her mouth, checked her, the DNA with her kids, come to find out the, the DNA said she was not the mother of those kids. <laughs> Talk about, you know, freaking out that you don't have the right kids, right? And what really happened was, is, is you have, it's essentially two people in one body that merges together. So the DNA in, like on your right hand, could be different than the DNA in your left hand. So sure enough, they did another test, a DNA test on another part of her body, and sure enough, she was a chimera, and that DNA matched her kids. And the, the funny thing is about chimera is uh, if, if, if you have a chimera, sometimes it'll develop uh, with other side effects. For example, you can have male and female reproductive organs uh, both at the same time, you know, kind of like a hermaphrodite kind of a thing going on. But, but a lot of times you don't even know what, if you're a chimera or not. And kind of a telltale tell sign that you are a chimera is that if you look at your eyes and your eyes are slightly different colored from the left to the right, you are probably a chimera. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this ball python right here, this is most likely a chimera. <laughs> this spider pied right here. And if you look at his eyes, his eyes are actually, he's got one black eye right here. I don't know if you can see that eye. That is a black eye. And then over on the other side, he has a kind of a gold eye. A gold eye on one side and a black eye on the other. <laughs> and so, so this is most likely a chimera. And you would never know unless uh, the eyes were slightly different. And the problem is, is, you know, there's a lot of people against breeding spider ball pythons because of the head wobble. Well, I actually tried to breed them this year to see uh, if, uh, I'm hoping that the head wobble is not genetically transferred. And then the other problem is, if, if this is truly a chimera, the, the results could be totally unexpected as far as what you'd expect. So this is actually a makeup of two different snakes. Who knows what the other snake is and what the genetic makeup is. And if the reproductive organs of the snake match the expression of the snake, or maybe it matches the uh, the other genetics from the other snake that this is made up. It gets really confusing when you get into chimerism. And kind of what I want to do from here is I pulled up a few chimeras on the internet on Morph Market and some paradoxes. And I kind of want to show you kind of what you can expect to see with some of these really weird combos. There's actually one that's probably the famous chimera of all time. And that is a snake called Skittles. And you go and I actually saw it at one of the reptile shows and they, they actually brought it to you know show after show and it's kind of a, like a world famous chimera and it's actually for sale on Morph Market. I think it's like $25,000. I think they just kind of wanted to, to, to put it on there with a high price because they didn't want to sell it. They just wanted to show it off. But I thought it was really interesting, a really wild looking snake. And let me tell you, you can never reproduce that snake. So if you actually bred it, you wouldn't get a chimera. You would get something maybe be completely unexpected. All right, so take a look at this snake. This is the craziest ball python that I have ever seen. This is Skittles, and she is a, definitely a chimera. And it almost looks like someone took a knife, cut sections of snakes, and glued them together. It's essentially two snakes in one body, which is really weird. And there's look at this. That, there's another picture of her all stretched out. <laughs> that is really crazy. And this is the albino, the, the yellow part, and the pied is the white part. And it looks like she has silver streak so it's it's almost like she has the silver streak part is the dark part from one snake and an albino pied from another snake blended into a single individual which is really interesting and they list the price here at uh, I think it's twenty six thousand five hundred and seventy five dollars. I'm sure you know if you if you had the right price and you made an offer, you could probably buy Skittles. I'm sure if you bred it, the the results would be pretty much unexpected as far as what you would get. Here is another Chimera. This one's kind of interesting because they're just listing it is a, a Chimera 
uh, with no real genes involved in the mix. So they don't really list the genes. And the interesting thing about a lot of chimeras, especially in people, is they'll actually have a split line down the center. You can see this, even the head split and the body split right down the center. It's like one snake is longitudinally attached to the other snake from head to tail. And that is pr pretty typical of your regular chimera. So I'd say this is definitely another chimera. And then what I did is I did a search for Paradox, and you can see, you know, some of these I, I sorted from the high price to the low price. So some of these are pretty interesting. Uh, uh, you know, some of them are showing up as Chimeras if you search for Paradox, and some of them are true Paradoxes. So I would say uh, the first two here, Skittles and this Chimera, are, um, are definitely a Chimera. And here's a, a paradox scaleless, totally scaleless. And you can see there's one tiny little brown spot here. Over here on this albino, there's little black spots. You know, in, in an albino tristripe, you definitely wouldn't expect those black spots. And those definitely wouldn't transfer to the offspring. Makes for a really cool snake, though. <laughs> and the other thing you really have to take into consideration. So, for example, this chimera sold for $7,500. And you have to realize that if you breed a chimera, you're not going to get a chimera. As a matter of fact, they, a lot of them, I, I, would, I would suspect that a lot of them could be sterile and not really breed. And if they do breed it might be one or the other or some unexpected results so that's one thing you have to keep in mind before you're shelling out a lot of money to invest in a paradox or a chimera they really don't breed true in most cases none that i've ever seen except for kind of the rumor that i heard about the atomic gene and you can see a lot of these uh, uh for example here is a lemon blast bamboo i actually have uh, a similar snake and it has just a little brown spot here. Here's some black spots on the albino pine. And here's a tiny little spot on this lemon blast bamboo. This one is uh, a Mojave bamboo should be a completely white snake and you can see it has a little bit of normal color kind of coming through on this one which is kind of interesting. Here is an albino pied high contrast with a black head <laughs> which is pretty interesting. Here's some more uh, paradoxes. So the paradox, here's one with just a little black. This has a black head. You know, just little spots here and there on some of them, and some of them are completely, uh, completely um, unexpected as far as the amount of color. Some have more color, some have less. And this one, this one down on the right, this one's pretty, pretty wild. Look, this is a coral glow. You know, there was another coral glow somewhere that was pretty interesting. Here's a banana lesser fire paradox. A lot of paradox and come through coming through on this one. Uh, let's see what else we can see here. <laughs> Here's one a banana red stripe paradox. Look, that's, uh, that's interesting. Here is the banana paradox. So this is supposed to be like a banana, like I have, like my coral glow, and it has black coming all through. Which is, it seems like lately, you know, if you search for paradox, I've seen a lot more paradoxes coming up. Here's an albino paradox on the bottom right. Has a lot of black coloring coming in for an albino. Yeah, I have just uh, another couple more pages of some paradoxes. You can definitely see here's an albino right in the middle with some black coming in, which is really interesting. Here's a really <laughs> high contrast, really bright albino with some black coming in. It's interesting to see some of these uh, some of these uh, paradoxes. And this one, this is probably one of my most interesting. Uh, I've seen quite a few of this on a lot of pines. So this is a pine over here. And here is this big black patch on the pine. I actually opened that up in a separate uh, window here. And you can see it's just <laughs> this big black patch. I've actually seen, it almost looks like someone took a marker or some dye and just made a big splotch right on the side. And this is one of the most interesting paradoxes. And I've seen this black splotch on a lot of pies, and it seems like it almost, almost, uh, you know, shows up a lot better in large black splotches just on the pies. As a matter of fact, I think most of the paradox show up as, as black 
on the pies and the albinos, some of the paradoxes kind of look like normal colors coming through on some of the other combos, which is pretty interesting. Okay, so there you have it. Now you know the difference between a paradox and a chimera. If you're thinking about breeding ball pythons, I would say you're probably safe to pick up the paradox. It's a really, it would make for a really cool snake. It won't transfer the paradox to the offspring, but if you're thinking about picking up the chimeras, let me tell you, I would pick them up as breeders with extreme caution. Not only will they not breed true, there's a possibility that they won't breed because of the genetic complexity and the reproductive organs may not be intact. So that's it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.